Good evening, everyone. Um, I think when I agreed to give this talk, we weren't being faced with a general election, and I promise not to talk about strong and stable leadership or Brexit or any of those awful things. Um, what, I, what I do, I do want to talk about the political, um, and, and I think because actually it's more important than it's ever been, not in the big P sense, um, but in the way that certainly we're noticing amongst our students and um, in a way of quite a lot of the communities that we work with, the sort of interest in the sort of activism and the need for actually doing something more than just us all sitting as passive receptors to what is going on around us. And I think it's interesting, people tend to think of fashion as being really ephemeral, that, you know, it's something that doesn't really matter. But I think one of my missions in life has been to sort of argue the case that, that fashion really does. And I think it's been really interesting to see how um, it's, it's been increasingly adopted as a way of making a statement. And so you've seen here uh, Ruth Negger on the... Um, uh, Oscar Catwalk and what she was doing, you know, you see this beautiful dress, Valentino, if you sort of follow fashion and know what that's about. But actually the thing that really strikes with it is the fact there's a small blue ribbon that she's wearing. Um, and this is, uh, represents the American Civil Liberties Union. And which is a non-partisan, not-for-profit organization, you know, which works for nearly 100 years to defend and protect individuals' rights. And at a time when, obviously, the Trump has been elected and all of those sorts of factors, the erosion of women's rights in particular were at the forefront. And Ruth and, and other actresses were adopting this ribbon to make the point. And I think in a way that that's what, I think for a lot of us, we suddenly realize that all of the strides that have been moving us forward suddenly are being turned. And we have in some way, in our own ways, needing to do something about that. And I think that was the other thing that, again, you know, saying fashion's priv frivolous, you know, potentially it's quite ephemeral. Um, but what is quite interesting is that sometimes it's an object or an item of clothing that begins to capture people's imaginations. And obviously what became as almost a, a joke, the idea of wearing these pink pussy hats, actually was a way for lots of people to be able to express and challenge all of the things that were going on. And that was for men as well as for women. And for some people who couldn't actually stand up and articulate what they felt, being able to knit, to make these hats and to actually wear them was a way of making a political statement. I think what's interesting as well is that the VNA has just adopted um, and bought one of these hats for their collection because it became um, to signify such an important part during the campaign with Trump. And these pussy hats weren't the only item of clothing. Um, you tend to think that fashion doesn't necessarily strike a chord, but it does. Some of the things that people get most angry about are hoodies, hijabs, burkinis. If you think about the things that actually get not just the Daily Mail, but all sorts of people really aggressive about items of clothing, you think, well, you know, surely we have a right to choose to wear whatever we wish. I think one of the reasons, again, why sometimes um, fashion can be criticised is because it's seen primarily as, as an industry for women. Um, and obviously it employs um, and a majority of the workforce are women at all levels, and I'll say a little bit more about that later. Um, but it's also become the opportunity for a number of women to really challenge and adopt quite a political, a political standpoint. Vivian Westwood, um, I'm sure many of you will be aware of the stand she takes about climate change, and Stella McCartney, who you're seeing here, uh, from the very outset, um, through the influence of her mother, refused to um, in any way use any animal products. And, that was seen to be very curious when she first started out, but now it's accepted that you can have, you know, really excellent clothes that look extraordinary, um, and her shoes and her bags um, are known. But it's not just the sort of um, Nappa leather that she uses, it's also viscose, for example. So she's um, planted a whole series of trees to develop a sustainable forest because viscose is one of the worst materials that you can have in terms of destroying the environment. So 
she's actually worked with that to ensure that there is a renewable uh, source uh, for, for, the, for its production. And her um, business is part of the Kering Group. So Kering is a bit like LVMH um, and it isn't necessarily so well known, although they have some of the top brands, if you know Yves Saint Laurent, Balenciaga, you know, um, Alexander McQueen, they're all owned by Kering. And Kering have adopted um, an environmental profit and loss account, which means that over the next few years, every single one of their businesses will become sustainable at all levels. So the environmental profit and loss means you don't just man manage the profit in terms of its financial, but what is its water impact? What does it mean in terms of energy? They even go right back into terms of looking at how the cattle are farmed, you know, how sheep are produced, all of those elements, and every single aspect of that supply chain are being challenged. And this is really important because, um, you know, we are acutely aware, London College of Fashion is essentially a women's college of the 57 million workers around the world, 80% of those are women, um, and we know acutely that modern slavery is a real issue. I'm sure that you're all aware that we've, um, with the uh, terrible crisis that we've got, whether that's to do with Syria or Afghanistan and so on, as soon as you're getting migrating peoples um, on one hand and demand for instant gratification on another, you know that there is going to be the exploitation um, of, of workers. And that's something that we all, in some way, as consumers, have to take account of. And what was quite interesting, a, a couple of um, weeks ago, we had a, a, an event at the college on modern slavery, asking really what fashion buyers, not just those people who go out looking at the factory, buying, the, buying and, and, and commissioning the work, but also us as consumers, what can we do to help reduce the impact um, in terms of, of um, modern slavery? Because we know that, for example, within the UK, there are between 10 and 13,000 slaves. And we know that um, it, what came out in the talk that we had the other week was that there are more slaves worldwide now than there were when slavery was abolished. There was a terrible article quite recently about people being openly sold in Libya. So we need to think about these things when we're buying our clothes. If we buy something that's really cheap, you know that somebody really has been exploited in its production. And that's something that as consumers, we have to really sort of weigh up and, and sort of look at those consequences. But one of the great things against all of this sort of things that are potentially quite negative, um, not only is the fact that a lot of our students are really concerned about this and want to address all of these issues in the supply chain, but we've also got activist groups like Fashion Revolution. Many of you will be aware of the Rana Plaza disaster that happened um, a few years ago. And this was set up by um, a, a couple of um, sort of activists. It's, essentially, it started by saying, well, everybody on the 24th of April should mark that day by wearing their clothes inside out to show where the label came from and the whole idea of who made my clothes became the sort of vantage point and now you have not just hashtag who made my clothes but who grew my clothes and that idea that actually if we all understand where our clothes come from who made them then again we can have a be much more sort of responsible um, and conscientious and conscious uh, consumers. And one of the other factors that, as a college, we've been uh, concerned about is the idea that not just that we ought to be aware and get behind these movements and, and in a way, use our, our, our students who are concerned about these things, but also to use the fact that we have all sorts of resources as being within the fashion industry. So we work, for example, with um, uh, women prisoners to set up a manufacturing unit uh, because the majority of women who go into prison are usually there because of abuse uh, of one form or another, um, usually by men. Um, and not only that, but they have to give up their children. And so to come out without a job, um, perhaps going back into abusive situation that you were before, but given a job and manufacturing, making clothes, 
um, begins to link things up. So if we know where our clothes have come from, we know where they've been produced, we're bringing manufacturing back to the UK, essentially we're beginning to make things, uh, make a difference and to make, to make change. And that's one of the things that we work with um, in a very concerted um, manner. And so in the end, you know, because I'm sort of coming up to the, to the last couple of words that I, I want to sort of say um, this evening, is really that one of the things that's becoming really interesting in all the reports that are coming through about the millennials and what that means and Generation Z, community, transparency, authenticity, these are the drivers. And as consumers, if we believe in these things, then that is what is going to change the industry. Um, and that is something that I think, whatever your creative discipline, um, whatever part of the uh, creative or um, cultural e economy or organisations you come from, we can actually be really um, uh, active and to really give out some great messages. And so I hope that um, maybe some of the things that I've said this evening will prompt you to, to think about these issues um, and to encourage everybody to take a stand and to buy responsibly. Thank you.